So I just watched Under the Skin and it was really disturbing. And that's what it was aiming to be, so I guess it succeeded. The film stars Scarlett Johansson, who's clearly not human. And you guessed it, she takes advantage of lonely men and then murders them. Now, obviously this concept has been done before, but its presentation is just so fresh and unique that I kind of fucking loved it. And this is why I can't fucking stand so-called film reviewers who do nothing more than describe events that take place in the film. Like, how the fuck do people even consider it a film review when you're saying nothing more than this happened and this was cool, this happened and I didn't like it, but this happened and that was cool. Because unless you're pointing out a glaring problem or inconsistency, simply listing what happens at a few points does nothing to prove a film's quality. What's more important is how it's executed, and this film does a great job in proving that. With a description like that, we could just as easily be talking about a really shitty movie, but in my opinion, I would say that this film is far from shitty. I really appreciate the choices that were made in terms of how much of the story is actually told, because despite the story being ridiculously simple, it never gives the impression that it's dumbing things down for you. And especially only after seeing it once, I have a lot of unanswered questions, and even with multiple watches, I suspect that many of them will remain unanswered. So whereas I suspect that some people will feel unfulfilled by the amount of answers there are on screen, I find it to be incredibly fitting for the genre. I don't know about you guys, but to me, fear and confusion go hand in hand. The film makes it clear that what you don't understand is what you're supposed to not understand. Where so many movies have failed trying to bring technical mumbo-jumbo future science into the equation, this film presents its supernatural aspects in such a way where you'll be wondering if what you're seeing visually is even literal. Certain scenes in the film play on with entirely solid color backgrounds, and even attempting to think of how the lighting was done in those scenes is pretty mind-boggling. And because of how incredibly surrealist these horrifying scenes are being presented, it really brings new meaning to the term nightmare fuel. Despite the comforting reality that the things happening in this film will never happen to me. It doesn't stop those disturbing fantasy horror-like images from now being etched into my brain. I can't wait to watch it again so I can desensitize myself to it. Also, if you want the full experience of these images, do not watch the film's trailer. I know I'm using the trailer for clips right now, but I've edited out all the parts that might ruin your first experience watching the film. Part of what I loved about this film is how natural the characters acted. Not only did Scarlett Johansson do a great job, but everyone else seemed like a very real person. During certain scenes where the vehicles stopped on the highway, the audio of cars going by and almost overpowering the speaker at volume gave an extra level of realism that helped sell the scene. And holy shit, I did a little bit of research and found out that a lot of the extras were actually real people. I like the idea of taking somebody who was well known and putting them in disguise. Let's do that with hidden cameras. We can really film a walking down a street and nobody knows it's her. Our character was dropped into the real world and we were documenting what happened. Things happened in an organic kind of a way that could never happen if they were scripted. Now there's a lot of repetition in this film and a lot of similarly looking recurring scenes. But the way that each of these scenes showed more and more as the film went along not only helped it to be more entertaining, but it gave it a really nice build up for the suspense as well. Not only that, but although there was a very specific musical score playing each time these scenes happened, each revisit to this type of scene would mean a slightly different musical arrangement arrangement or an entirely new instrument added altogether. So considering that's essentially what the scene itself is doing without the music in the first place, it's difficult to think of a better way that the music could have complemented the film. Now unfortunately this film is not without its issues. There are a couple points in the film that are difficult to describe without using the word unlikely, and most of what I've been praising this film for does not necessarily take up the entirety of the film. After a certain point I feel as though it starts to have some pacing issues, but overall this film was very impressive. There was one shot that made me really confused as to whether or not he actually wanted her to be in focus, but the majority of the film had some pretty mind-blowing cinematography. Hopefully a few of the unanswered questions in the film are ones that can be solved through a hive mind of internet film geeks, but I honestly wouldn't be surprised if I stay confused forever. For a film that uses fear of the unknown as part of its selling point, I fail to see how I could let that bother me. The few things this film has going against it don't really compare to the overall achievements of what this film has going for it, and this will probably show up on a list of mine somewhere. For me, this film is at least a 7 out of 10, and I can see myself solidifying it as an 8 on my second watch. But I don't know future me all that well, and he seems kind of shady, so I'm giving this one a 7 for now. Why does it have to be so difficult? She just keeps her sedated on constant doses of LSD, so she can get drunk by herself. She is focusing in hardcore to this night. <laughs> so long! Seriously, like... <laughs>